And now, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. All right, Bobby, we can start the program now. I've got... Start the program? We've been yes. on for 30 minutes. We thought you were lost. My dear fellow, if I weren't the world's greatest navigator, I wouldn't have got here at all. Frank, you only yes. sailed in from Catalina. You can roll there in three hours. The lackadaisical remark of a landlubber. Yes. I weighed anchor in the Catalina Harbor at two bells this morning. There was a stiff quartering breeze abaft the binnacle and a heavy sea off the starboard bow. Why didn't you use I... a finnaker and hoist a jib boom on the lee side? I raised my telescope to take an observation. I, 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 what did you say? Were you carrying a balloon jib or a Genoa? Uh, the, uh balloon, a uh, Genoa, uh, jib. Uh, <laughs> you don't mean to tell me you know anything about boats? Poop deck, young sir. <laughs> <laughs> the last of a long line of freighters. What do you want to yeah. know about boats, Mahardy? Oh, yes, he knows about boats. Uh, well, well, Frank, I... you ran into a boat expert and you're sunk. Sunk? Not on your life, boy. The Morgans have all <laughs> followed the sea, and I'm no exception. I first saw the light of day on the Albany night boat. Mm-hmm. I cut my teeth on a porthole, and at 16, I was master of a full rig slop. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's blue. <laughs> this makes me seasick, but gee, it's interesting. Yes, well, I spent 30 years at sea, 21 years before the man. Nine years and behind I... the eight ball. <laughs> Listen here, young. You're looking at a man who traversed the Atlantic in a sailboat. I did it in a canoe. I... canoe? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh... Well, did you ever navigate the Arctic Ocean? I crossed it on a surfboard. <laughs> surfboard. An Eskimo beach boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's see. The Pacific Sargasso uh, Mediterranean. The Red Sea. Red Sea. Did you ever sail the Red Sea? Sail it? I painted it. I... <laughs> Young, you'll soon be ready for a summer program. <laughs> but don't expect me to listen to it. I'm leaving right now. Oh, don't go, Frank. I well, love to hear stories about the sea. You do? Meredith, you're really very winsome. And at the same time, you're not a total loss. <laughs> Someday, we're alone. I'll tell you about my briny adventures. Oh, tell me now, Frank. Don't be scared of Bob. My rural friend, do you think the childish hecklings of a land-bound weasel can intimidate a man with the blood of Vikings in his veins? Vikings? Yes. Two weeks ago, I... you told me your ancestors were Scots. Scots? Uh, uh, yes. Well, the Scots were my close relatives. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Tracing my family back to the 10th century, we find my famous Viking ancestor, Leif Njorgen. He was, <laughs> he, was one, he was one of the original four Northmen. Who were the other three? Well, his brothers, Olaf, Svenska, and Jose. That Jose must have been a ringer. <laughs> <laughs> well, but leave it or not, gentlemen, these intrepid Vikings were responsible for a new epoch in shipbuilding. What was it, Frank? Well, they'd made several attempts to sail to India, but the mountainous waves of the North Sea had wrecked their flimsy wooden ships. So they determined to construct a vessel entirely of lead. That much lead must have cost a lot of tin. Well, we'll iron that out later. Oh. (laughs) They'll be grabbing me for a summer program, (laughs) too. Were your Viking ancestors rich, Frank? No, but with the boldness and ingenuity that is always the mark of greatness, they obtained their lead by stealing the entire sewer system of the town of Oslo. <laughs> well, how long did it take him to build the boat? Three years, but it would have been finished sooner had not Olaf been so lazy. While the other three boys were plying their tools industriously, Olaf would hang over the front of the boat lying in a deep sleep. You do it when you're awake. I... <laughs> I'll bet you're a scream at parties with a lady's hat and a big safety pin. (laughs) (laughs) Never mind him, Frank. Did they get the boat finished? They finally did, but they gave the figurehead four coats of varnish before they found it was Olaf. (laughs) Well, part my hair with a hog leg. (laughs) The whole town turned out for the launching, which took place on January 15th in the year 956. Picture that historic occasion. The graceful lines of the Viking ship, 40 tons of lead, polished and gleaming in the sun. With a triumphant flourish, Leif Mjorgen crashed a bottle of old wine across her bows and cries, I christen thee Smorgasbord. Well, that's a pretty name. Yes. Well, Svenska cut the ropes, and the beautiful craft slid down the ways in the huzzas of the song. A new chapter in man's mastery of the sea. 
Well, did they get the Indians safe and sound? Well, they would have, except for one unfortunate circumstance. What was that? Well, as soon as the boat hit the water, it went straight to the bottom of the harbor and was never seen again. <laughs> well, Frank, your ancestors wrote a pretty short chapter in maritime history. But that was only the first paragraph, my boy. After they were released from the Oslo jail, where they'd been confined on a trumped-up charge of stealing sewer pipes, they <laughs> built themselves the most invincible ship of the day and became sea rovers. Oh, boy, pirates. Yes. Yeah. Wait till I put down my baton. <laughs> well, I can... <laughs> Say, Frank, I know a wonderful pirate joke. Oh, yeah. Did you know that in olden times they couldn't hang a pirate with a wooden leg? Why not? They had to use a rope. <laughs> Now we've got a band for the summer program. <laughs> Shall I go on? Pray do, Frank, pray do. Well, Leith became known as the Robin Hood of the Sea. <laughs> Cruising the ocean in his powerful trireme, they plundered the rich and gave the money to the poor. But they became so prosperous that competition was inevitable, and it was then that Ethelbob the Saxon appeared on the scene. Ethelbob? Yes. The cruel, cunning sea wolf. He realized the folly of attacking Lee single-handed, so he organized a fleet. In a daring raid on the Spanish coast, Ethelbob captured five armored Spanish galleons, manned them with cutthroats, and set out after the Vikings. Boy, Lee's better look out now. Well, he was always vigilant. <laughs> but one morning, just before dawn, while he was on the dog watch, he took a cat nap. I smell a rat. <laughs> Suddenly, the morning fog lifted. Leaf opened his eyes and found his ship surrounded by the Sincomada. Sincomada? What's yes. that, Frank? Five galleons of Ethelbob. Shall I check your oil? No, thanks. I just had a lube job. <laughs> what am I talking about? Start the battle, Frank. Oh, yes. That, well, the battle. Well, Leaf won and became an explorer. He and his brothers lived to sail the seven seas and charted many a new course until, like all true sailormen and all true Morgans, they found happiness in Davy Jones's liquor. I mean, luck. <laughs> Frank, that's very interesting, but I don't believe a syllable of it. You don't have to take my word for it. Just go to the British Museum in London and ask to see the record of Leif Morgan's voyage to the BVD Islands. And where are the BVD Islands, Frank? In the West Indies. <laughs> But if you ask to see it, the curator will show it to you under glass. Leif Morgan's original log. What's in the log, Frank? Termites. Well, so long, fellas. I've got to go and find it. Friends, tonight we have with us a very special guest. He's Mrs. Frances Edwards, head of the commissary and coffee shop on the MGM lot. Mrs. Edwards, you know, is pretty experienced when it comes to making coffee. She serves over 2,400 cups of Maxwell House coffee every day. And the compliments she gets would make any woman happy. Mrs. Edwards, I'm sure everyone would like to hear what you think is the most important thing for getting a good cup of coffee. Won't you tell us? Well, friends, before you even think of making your coffee, you want to be sure the coffee you buy is good. It must have a rich, full-bodied, satisfying flavor in the blend itself. Then, to make sure you get all this rich, delicious flavor in your cup, it's very important for your coffee to be absolutely fresh. Probably you've often picked a package of some coffee that smells fragrant and delicious. But did you ever stop to think that all that wonderful aroma is really coffee flavor being wasted? Yes, it's flavor no one will ever get in a cup. That's right, Mrs. Edwards. Because, friends, air steals away coffee flavor. All coffee, whether ground or in the whole bean, starts to lose flavor the moment it's roasted, if exposed to the air. In fact, ground coffee, packed in ordinary containers where air can get at it, loses as much as 45%, nearly half its precious flavor, in only nine days. Now, that's just why we take the new Maxwell House, still fresh and fragrant from the roasting oven, and seal it in that famous blue super vacuum can. Now, that way, no air can get in, so no flavor can get out. So the rich new Maxwell House comes into your kitchen with all its full-bodied flavor and goodness sealed in, none wasted. Why don't you try a pound of this famous Maxwell House tomorrow? See for yourself what rich coffee flavor, extra full-bodied goodness can mean to your coffee enjoyment. For with the new Maxwell House, you're getting coffee that's not just days fresh, but roaster fresh. And no coffee can be fresher than that. 